Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss uh, disaster management and mental health. Myself, uh, Dr. Suresh Padapad, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry, Niamax, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic purpose only and they are not the law, they are not the guidelines or not a substitute for professional opinion. Please do contact experts from the respective and relevant field of disaster for opinion. This presentation is based upon my personal experience in working in disaster and a publication which was published in a peer-reviewed journal. For legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. Now, this presentation is based on this article published in Indian Journal of Psychological Medicine in 2015. The title of the article is Disaster Management and Mental Health Perspective. First, what is disaster? Disaster has been defined by various people in various ways. However, the National Disaster Management Authority Act of 2005 clearly says disaster means a catastrophe, mishap, calamity or a grave occurrence in any area arising from natural or a man-made or by an accident or negligence which results in substantial loss of life or human suffering or a damage to or a destruction of property or a damage to or a degradation of environment is such of a nature or a magnitude it is beyond the coping capacity of the community so please understand it should be a loss which is beyond the coping capacity of a community is called as disaster See the characteristics of any disaster or any definition which has been defined worldwide, it is sudden in onset, unpredictable, uncontrollable, huge magnitude of destruction, human loss and suffering, and it should exceed the coping capacity of the community. So that's the classical uh, characteristic of any disaster. What is the principle behind the disaster mental health? The principle of disaster mental health is stemming from the preventive medicine. Basically, prevention is better than a cure. See, many of these natural disasters do occur and they are inevitable part of life. So prevention is one way further being ready for the disaster and also response early can mitigate the uh, suffering. So what has happened is earlier it was relief-centered post-disaster management to holistic, dimensional, preventive community approach has been adopted now. This can be understood on the basis of six R's. One is being ready, that is prepared, response, immediate action, relief, like sustained rescue work, and also rehabilitation, recovery, and resilience. So these are the important concepts which now the disaster management is focused on. What are the different phases of disaster mental health? Phases of disaster mental health. If you look at the diagram, there are two important categories. On one axis, it is emotion. On the other axis is the duration. And as soon as the disaster strikes in, you can classify the phases into four phases. First phase is heroic phase. Second phase is animal phase. The third is disillusionment phase. And the fourth is a restoration phase. Coming to the heroic phase, as soon as the disaster kicks in, the community is at shock. Immediately, they get together to rescue each other. If it is an earthquake, all the members of the community get together to save life and they do whatever possible as collectively to save lives. So that is heroic phase, which lasts from maybe immediately to the disaster to one week. After that one week, there will be a helping agencies which come from governmental agencies, NGO, international and other neighborhood communities come together to help the people who are survivors. This is called as honeymoon phase. The people will be in the honeymoon phase, the people will be uh, kept in a camps and where they will be given food and there will be many VIPs, politicians, bureaucrats, they come and visit and they do provide some kind of uh, hope by giving of various promises. And at the same time, the media's highlighting their needs will be shown flashed across, across various newspapers and channels. So that is the reason it is called as honeymoon phase. And as soon as this honeymoon phase, it is from two to uh, three months, the uh, media and also the VIPs and the bureaucrats start giving importance to these people. And then the disillusionment phase starts kicking. This dis disillusionment phase 
is the longest in duration. It may run from three months to three years. That period, there will be high mental health comorbidity. So that is the reason it's called as disillusionment phase. Whatever the promises, whatever the policies, there will be coming with a bureaucratic tapes, a bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic tapes, and then the huge mental health issues are set in. For a period of three years, the restoration phase kicks in. So what are the normal human response to a disaster? Please do understand, these are normal people in abnormal situation. I will repeat this, the survivors, they are all normal people in an abnormal situation called as disaster. Human reaction to disaster can be classified into two, normal reaction and an abnormal reaction. See, the normal reaction for any kind of disaster is anxiety, irritability, overwhelming, fatigue, anger, loneliness, being bored, scared, frustration, sadness. And the other essential, very important, uh, the emotion which needs to be addressed in disaster is survivor's guilt. In a family of five, the father is the only survivor and the rest, four of his family members dies. This guilt, why I am alive, that survivor guilt is a huge problem which needs to be addressed at the earliest. Otherwise, usually the survivor guilt may push many of them to attempt or commit suicide. Losing control of the emotions, having panic attacks. These are the commonest normal reaction. And the grief reaction. A grief reaction is as per the Kubler-Ross shock and denial. It cannot happen to me. How it happened to my community? So that is shock and denial. The next is anger. Why it happened to me? And the anger may be turned against the people or else maybe against the God. So next will be depression. Then accept bargain and acceptance. This is the commonest, what we call it as a grief reaction. However, there may be abnormal reaction or abnormal grief reaction. There may be absent grief, delayed grief, exploding grief, and so forth. There also may be a mental illness can be seen. They are all depression, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, somatization, unexplained somatic symptoms, substance abuse, substance dependence, substance intoxication. These are the human reactions which can be seen in disaster. What is the prevalence of mental health illness in disaster population? See, mental health morbidity can be divided into two. One is acute phase and the long-term phase. Acute phase may be lasting what I said. It may be one week to three months. So, these acute phase reactions are self-limiting, need not require any medication and that can they are all by a just of simple intervention that can be brought under control. However, the long-term reactions do require what we call it as professional help. And this during this phase, there is a high need of uh, psychiatrists and others mental health professionals. And many studies across the world have shown there is an increased from two to three times the prevalence of mental illness in the community. For example, in India, now the mental health morbidity is considered as 10% of the population. If there is a disaster, it increases by two to three percent. That is 10 to 20, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the population may have mental health morbidity in the survivors group. The types of mental illness seen are like this. First and the foremost, immediately after the disaster, the relapse of pre-existing uh, psychiatric disorder. The reason being is it's a stressful event, non-availability of the medication are the commonest for the relapse of pre-existing mental disorder, adjustment disorder, abnormal grief, anxiety disorders like panic disorder, GAD, non-specific anxiety, acute stress reaction, insomnia, depression, death wishes, substance abuse. You can find in camp people becoming intoxicated because of the loss of family member and property and they create havoc in the camps. Post-traumatic stress disorder, non-specific symptoms like dizziness, headache, recollection of disaster events, unable to sleep, night terrors, nightmares. Sometimes we can also see dissociative symptoms and somatoform disorders. These are all the commonest mental illness seen during disaster. And also we can see some of the observation which have been seen in children. They are all non-specific symptoms in children are dizziness, vertigo, startle response, sleep-wake cycle disturbance, clinging behavior, excessive crying, withdrawal, anger, irritability, numbingness, 
food refusal and decreased appetite many a time there will be regressive behavior regressive behavior in the form of thumb sucking or passing urine in the clothes during uh, in the night which the child had gained the dryness sometimes school refusal school dropout academic decline anxiety disorder like panic disorder phobic disorder non specific anxiety becoming defiant opposite uh, talking back to the parents and also truancy stealing lying post traumatic stress disorder depression somatoform disorder and other emotional disorders in children are well known but however if they are guided properly there is a resilience which is very high in children they bounce back very fast who are at risk of developing mental illness in the disaster zone the risk factors for development of mental illness in survivor groups are classified into three first is disaster factors human factors and social factors disaster factors are severity of the disaster threat to the life loss of life loss of a family member and the duration of exposure if the duration of exposure is huge or what we call it as longer then there is high possibility the person will develop mental illness the human factors like female gender children elderly physically disabled chronic medical illnesses like diabetes hypertension cancer asthma and various like people on renal uh, kidney diseases requiring dialysis or those people and also single substance use poor family support are the human factors which push them to develop mental illness social factors like loss of economic livelihood poverty poor and also poor social support family support ethnic minority displaced population or the population who are at high risk of developing mental illness at the same time there is something called as resilience what is this resilience the resilience are those people who do not develop mental illness what are those factors resilience means bouncing back or else resilience means the speed which the homeostasis achieved after the displacement or a disaster so the resilience are those people who do not develop any mental illness or else any pathological reaction see sir, certain observation which has been found in various researches are these resilience factors depend upon various like cohesive community sharing of community resources minimal displacement after disaster good social support and network preserved family system and support altruistic behavior of the community leaders minimal materialistic need religious faith and spirituality these are the resilience resilience factors which protect the survivors from development of mental illness what is the role of mental health professionals in disaster situation if you look at the disaster management this can be easily classified depending upon the various phases first and the foremost is preventive and planning for disaster curative and stress management during the disaster and after the disaster is again a prevention starts for example it is preventive and what we call it as uh, planning during this phase what are the activities done by a mental health professional during the pre disaster that is before the disaster strikes we have to prepare the community and also the nation for the disaster so first and the foremost is public education activities like life skills education educating about the disaster mental health educating about how to mitigate the disaster is very essential at the same time we have to develop something called as disaster response network to develop a collaboration with various agencies like governmental non governmental agency community health workers and to know the resources in the community who can pitch in as soon as the disaster strikes disaster response training of the trainers basically there may be a unique disaster we require a community to work together so that there should be availability of trainers counseling skills stress management identifying common mental disorders referral and triaging is a very essential part of disaster planning also psychoeducation about the mental health trauma disaster trauma and also various issues pertaining to disaster need to be discussed before disaster strikes community level support and also community resilience training is very essential in the planning strengthening informing and education basically iec material to be developed before in hand before the disaster strikes again further if we look at the during the honeymoon phase what are the things we should do during the honeymoon phase that is immediately after the disaster that the first 3 months being a part of a multidisciplinary relief team we should be able to work gel and say that i will be able to contribute in this way many a time the boundaries of 
the professional work becomes blurred. You have to accept it. You may be a doctor. You may have to do some social work. At the same time, you should be able to support the survivors in whatever best possible way. Providing mental health care for the pre-existing uh, mentally ill people and also substance use withdrawal is a huge problem immediately after the uh, aftermath of disaster because the supply chain of the substance use is disrupted and sudden there is a withdrawal of substances maybe alcohol withdrawal will be a huge problem or else if there is a cannabis withdrawal or opioid withdrawal are very common during immediate immediately after the disaster so immediately we have to do a rapid assessment of mental health or what we call it as a rapid mental health surveillance has to be done magnitude of psychological impact available mental health resources in the community needs assessment cultural and religious perspective of the community needs to be taken into consideration disaster outs basically under essential is disaster psychiatry outreach team should be made available and they start moving into the community promotion of resilience and coping should be encouraged as soon as the disaster uh, re rehabilitation starts dealing with the victims and volunteer volunteer stress management should be taken care immediately after the uh, disaster strikes fostering the mass grieving and mourning many a time what happens is during the disaster the dead bodies are not available the people continue to believe that their family members are alive and they don't grieve at all so after a period of maybe uh, 15 days or 20 days if the person is missing there should be a mass grieving process to be done it may be a candlelight march or a symbolic a uh, ritual has to be organized in the community so that the let go let going occurs at the same time collaborating with administrative and funding agencies to see how a community can work together mental health education do's and don'ts has to be done and also local leaders should be involved and in educating this public at large utilizing mass media to reach the every survivor is a very very important component initiating the collaboration with local agencies for capacity building outside the agencies for support is a very a crucial part and also planning research at this point time point of time prepares for the next disaster the other essential component which we commonly see is curative or what we call it as during the disillusionment phase what has to be done that is a very a, it's a long process it may it, it starts from 3 months to 3 years this is the period where the mental health support will be very less and also the resources from the community will be very less to the survivors providing for a providing continuous care for person with mental illness is a big challenge attending the referral continuing and expanding the capacity building is a very very essential component training of resourceful community members like private physician doctors primary health care staff paramedical staff school teachers anganwadi teachers asha workers and also of course alternative complementary medicine and also religious leaders spiritual leaders and faith healers do play a important role in disillusionment phase community outreach camps hand holding of the community health workers assessment intervention and feedback mechanism is very essential let me remind you this is going to be a long duration from 3 months to 3 years the sustained effort is required from the community and also the nation at large what are the different approach to disaster mental health management disaster mental health management has been classified into two one is medication and non medication or else one is providing medicine another one is a non medicine providing medicines are usually focused on for the persons with mental illness who already had before the disaster substance withdrawal is another important group and new cases of depression ptsd anxiety disorder dissociative symptoms acute stress disorder unexplained somatic symptoms substance intoxication these are the places the medication plays very important role however however the prophylactic use of psychotropic medication to prevent mental illness this question has been asked by many bureaucrats and policy makers i was involved in a review which was published in psychopharmacology bulletin clearly indicated that prophylactic use of psychotropic medication to prevent mental illness in survivors lack evidence there are no studies and there is no justification to give psychotropic medication in survivors it has to be after diagnosis not before diagnosis so there is no justification to give prophylactic psychotropic medication for survivors non pharmacological intervention is very famous and also very accepted the first and the foremost is psychological first aid this has been advocated by world health organization 
This can be easily trained to the lay workers and it can be implemented across the survivors. Trauma focused CBT. This is one of the well uh, studied and also there is evidence for this. But however, this requires highly trained clinical psychologists to provide these services. So this becomes a high limitation or what we call it as a bottleneck. Critical incident stress debriefing. Again, this also requires strained manpower. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, EMDR. But unfortunately, this also requires highly trained manpower like clinical psychologist, psychiatrist, and psychiatric social worker. Stress management, common, what we call it as community-based group intervention, art therapy, group discussion, dramas, storytelling, structuring the day, engaging in activities, yoga, relaxation, and sports and games. These are the various non-pharmacological intervention do play a role in preventing mental illness in survivors. To address the huge burden in the survivors after the disaster, there should be innovation at local level. To there should be a, what we call it as demedicalizing the experiences, do not diagnose, basically provide help. You calling a survivor that you are a mentally ill is stigmatizing and they may refuse help. So that's demedicalizing is very essential and also deprofessionalize the services. Basically, you start training, training the local leaders, train the local available ASHA workers, Anganwadi workers, nurses, and also various doctors, even alternative medicine people, so that you can reach every survivor and if they require help, you can provide help. The best example for deprofessionalizing is providing psychological first aid by the community members to the survivors. So psychological first aid can be taught to everyone in the community. So what are the steps? First and the first, foremost is making contact with the survivors, asking them what help is required, making a rapid assessment what is the needs, protecting the survivors from further harm, ensuring immediate safety and comfort, basic, provide, basically providing basic needs, maybe food, taking them to a safety, providing water, asking them what kind of practical assistance is required, gathering information from the where they are, where they need to go, listening to the people, listening to survivors is a very essential component because they are confused, they are stressed out, there is a overwhelming response. So listening to them, providing them help, orienting them to the disaster plays a crucial role, comforting them and also helping them to feel calm and also connecting to the various agencies, services, and also social support network plays an important role in psychological first aid. This is the disaster time. There is the help is required is huge. Providing help to each other plays a crucial role. To conclude, please do understand survivors are normal people in abnormal situation. The role of psychiatrist and mental health professional, although it's very high during the phase three, that is disillusionment phase, many a time, since there are no mental health professional available in our community in the disaster zone, we need to pitch in immediately and we need to work in a multidisciplinary team. And also, we have to play a curative role in the disillusionment phase, which starts from three months to three years till the restoration occurs. So please do understand, disaster management is a preventive aspect. It is basically starting from the prevention to the restoration phase. And another important crucial role is stress management for the healthcare workers, relief workers is very essential so that the continuation of relief work can be continued. Preventing relapse in persons with already mental illness plays a huge role which decreases the morbidity in the mental health in the, mental health in the community. Psychological first aid training also plays a crucial role in the preventive aspects. Friends, so please do subscribe my channel, watch other disaster management videos from this channel and also please keep watching. I'm going to post practical tips during disaster management for the healthcare workers. Please do subscribe to the channel to get those videos and notification. Thank you very much.